And let there be no doubt, Scotland will have its referendum and the people of this country will have their choice. They will not be denied their say. Just in case some people in Whitehall aren't listening. <laughs> Scotland's referendum is going to happen and no UK Prime Minister, no UK Prime Minister should dare to stand in the way of Scotland's democracy. 208. At, uh, at Alec, Westminster, we've been in some later, Scottish danger Democrats, here, we shall hear. 1,078. Angus Robertson, Scottish National Party, SNP, 18,478. Douglas Roberts, Douglas Ross, Scottish Conservative and Unionist, 22,000. Uh, a time of churn of change. We don't know exactly what's happening with uh, Brexit. And so we've had these two big referenda in Scotland, the independence referendum, the Brexit vote. Uh, and I think n now is the right time to better understand where is the public with all of that. <laughs> right there. They're very good, the SNP. I've said this before. They're, they're very good at the way they word things. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I see right through these people. Um, I wish I was wrong, but I just don't think I am. I mean, put it into context, just after the Brexit referendum came and went, miraculously, Scotland had an overall majority to remain in the EU, apparently. So... Sturgeon went on a campaign of crying about being dragged out of the EU against our will and threatening to have an independence referendum as soon as possible. Then an election came round the corner and she subsequently lost a third of her seats, including the asshole that's speaking just now or the, in that video. So they then put it on the back burner, like they always do, and occasionally teased it, but then started pushing for... Uh, no deal. No, for no deal to be taken off the table and for a people's vote. They started their tirade of trying to get us to remain in the EU. And that should really be all you need to know in terms of where their loyalties truly lie. Because they would quite happily take an independence referendum, that lifeline that is the sole reason that their party still exists, fucking redefine it and use it as a means to drag us back into the EU and forget all about going it alone, you know? And that's what they've been doing uh, all this time. They've been encouraging Theresa May at every given notice to take no deal for the table and this constant drive for a, uh, a people's vote and this bullshit about compromising. She's never been desperate to get, stay in the customs union, etc. you know? and. Now they're starting their, their fucking Indie Ref 2 uh, hinting again. And the reason being, of course, now that we're entering the latter stages before Brexit's supposed to be official, if I'm not mistaken. So they're getting a bit paranoid now that they might not get to stay in the EU be, by, the, by the UK deciding to do so. So they might have to try and take matters into their own hands. But of course... In order for them to be able to get their referendum to be uh, put forth, they need enough public support behind them, which completely blows their whole narrative out the water that they've been saying constantly that the polls show a mass rise in SNP support. You've been hearing that a lot lately, I'm sure you have. And of course, the the supposed whole of Scotland voting to remain in the EU in the first place, even though that was debunked, clearly debunked by the fact that they lost a shit ton of their seats. but. Even so now, where they're needing to test the water to get see where people are in terms of where they stand in, in regards to Brexit or wanting to remain in the EU. I mean, it really calls into question everything that they've been saying. The people of Scotland have been dragged out against their will, we're being ignored, you know, all this effing BS. And like, it just, this debunks everything that they say and every politician and paper that comes out backing, referend uh, backing the idea of another referendum by claiming that there's all this support and everybody's behind Sturgeon. Quite clearly they're not. Otherwise they wouldn't need to do this, would they? Anyway. In Scotland, we don't actually have that much 
uh, evidence of all of this. There's some really good work done academically by uh, acts at referenda in Scotland, the independence referendum, the Brexit vote. Uh, and I think n now is the right time to better understand where is the public with all of that. I thought I thought the whole I thought the whole Scotland wanted to leave, no, to remain. Sorry, I thought there was a mass spike in SNP support, a surge in SNP support. I keep hearing about that. You know, people of Scotland vote to remain. Blah 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 blah. So what's all this? What is this? What's the point of this? Could it be that you know fine well if you call another referendum and you lost, your party would be done. Could it be that? So you need to make sure that there's enough support behind the idea before you can call it. And that's where your main problem lies. Because nobody effing wants it, bar your followers. And there isn't a mass rampant rise in SP support. And any new found followers that you've got now have probably got something to do with the absolute manipulation that's come from the SNP in the last few months. Every time they get any airtime or any time they write in a paper or whatever it is, they constantly use words, the buzzwords like catastrophic, cliff edge, the dangers, the Brexit, drug that gets to will, all these words they do it all the time. And they're trying their damnedest to do every manipulative tactic possible so it, to get into your fucking head so when the, if the idea ever came around and another referendum came to be maybe just maybe some people might be convinced by all the bullshit that they've been hearing from Sturgeon and this asshole and Ian Blockford and all the rest of them In Scotland we don't actually have that much uh, evidence of all of this, there's some really good work done <laughs> academically by John Curtis and others but there's not actually that much out there that I think can help, or certainly not enough, that can help inform um, the, the wider yes movement. Wait, what? <laughs> Is he saying in not so many words that there's not a, a, a real drive for another referendum? Pretty stagnant in that department, is it? Hmm? So is that everything that you've been saying for the last few months live then? Hmm? What a shock. Nobody wants your fucking referendum to go back into the EU, to join the Euro. <laughs> oh man, fuck off man. Um, both in terms of understanding where the public is, but also- I thought you knew where the public was. That's all we've been hearing. The people that's got to vote to remain. This should be clear cut. I don't understand why I haven't called the referendum months ago. Instead of all this pussy footing around and panicking about the, po the potential of a no-deal Brexit that you claim is going to be catastrophic, you've had bumps to call your referendum, why haven't you done it? Oh, that's right, you've not had the public support behind you, and you still don't, hence this shit. In the ref timing, what do you mean? how much more timing do you need? Call it if you're going to call it, but you won't do it. <laughs> that's unreal, man. I think people need to know where we are going and uh, where we are and given that we don't know where we are with Brexit is, is it going to be a hard Brexit, a soft Brexit, a no Brexit, a people's vote we need greater clarity on where we are going before we could ask the question but we also need to do the very basic work of understanding where the public are in all of this oh. <laughs> hey, oh Jesus, you're, you're kind of admitting right here that you don't have the support that you claimed you did that's quite funny but nonetheless if for, ever, for whatever reason there was a people's vote and then the, e the UK voted to remain or if there was no Brexit at all you don't have your mandate anymore but that doesn't bother you because this isn't about independence is the, the independence is their last lifeline it's the lifeline of Scotland to go independent on their own merit but they're going to take that for themselves and use it as a last ditch attempt to get us to remain in the EU you know what I mean that's all they care about. That's why I think they're being paid somewhere. Like it's just, they. I mean, they might always have been pro EU, but fucking hell, it's become so apparent in the last two, three years. Their true colours have been well and truly shown. If I'm honest, yeah. Anyway, peace.